Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to prevent object mutation. As seen in the previous challenge, constant declarations alone doesn't really protect your data from mutation. To ensure your data doesn't change, JavaScript provides a function, object.freeze, to prevent data mi uh, mutation. Once the object is frozen, you can no longer add, update, or delete properties from it. Uh, any attempt at changing the object will be rejected without an error. So here we're going to let, we're setting an object variable with obj, and we're setting that equal to an, uh, an object with the name, uh, a free code camp uh, value, and then a, a review key with uh, the string of awesome in the value. And we're closing that out. Object.freeze, object.review equal bad. This means that we can't change the review from awesome to bad. And then a new prop, it'll be, this will be ignored and the mutation, it, because the mutation is not allowed. And so if we console log the object, it's going to come out to be the same because we have frozen it here. In this challenge, you're going to use object.freeze to, to prevent mathematical constants from changing. You need to freeze math constants objects so that no one is able to alter the value of pi, add or delete properties. Math constants, we want to change the below here. So we want to go... Um, object.freeze... And then in there, we're going to say math constants. Cool. And you don't want to replace the constant keyword. Should be a constant variable by using constant. Do not change the original math constants. And pi should equal 3.14 at the end. Constant pi is equal to free object. Let's see if we console.log pi, it should be equal to 3.14. So I think we're going to pass the test if we run them. Cool. And just to reiterate, this is just so that we could read it at the bottom. That's not necessary. If you want to just click here to run the tests, then that will work. Anyways, so this will be useful. Uh, it'll, this will actually be useful later on when you have data that you want to protect from other parts of your programs. This be, will become more useful once you get more into like server side language, I would guess. Um, I don't see the use of it in any sort of static website development. But because we're doing JavaScript now, we're moving into dynamic web programming. So uh, yeah, hope this helps and we'll see you guys in the next lesson.